33-year-old Jessica Woods is behind bars for trying to sell a toddler for $500 outside a store and then abandoning the child. On the 5th of March, Jessica was spotted loitering outside the H&R block at 2413 Krill Avenue in Palaka, Florida, with her 18-month-old daughter who had a bruise on her face. An employee of the business told police that she recognised Jessica as a mother, who frequented the area and even used the H&R block restroom to change her daughter. Jessica at one point was spotted hitting her child with her elbow and spanking her inside the bathroom. The next morning, Jessica was found sleeping on the exterior of the air conditioning unit, while her daughter was inside a nearby shopping cart with no blankets. The concerned employee confronted Jessica and asked if she needed help, and Jessica demanded money. When the employee said that she'll buy her items, but not give her cash, Jessica became frustrated and threw her child. Later in the day at around 2pm, the witness said that Jessica crossed the street and went over to talk with her. She then put the baby down on the ground near some grass when the child began to crawl towards the busy road. The worker picked up the baby and Jessica offered to sell her daughter for $500. The woman said that she would not give her any money when Jessica replied, you can have the bastard. When the employee refused to buy the toddler, Jessica walked away and abandoned her child. The worker took the child into the H&R block and cleaned her up. Jessica did not return to take custody of the child. The employee took the baby to the Palaka Police Department and told them what happened. According to the Palaka Police Department, Jessica is known to have frequented the area. Officers and the department's victim advocate provided care to the child until the Department of Children and Families took custody of her. The child has since been placed into foster care. On the 7th of March, police located Jessica and arrested her. She's charged with child abuse, child neglect, abandonment of a child and selling a minor for money. She remains held at the Putnam County Jail on a $255,000 bond on a condition that she has no contact with her daughter. 27-year-old Emily McKinnon and her boyfriend, 30-year-old Joe Johnson, are behind bars after lying to authorities about a fictitious stray dog mauling the woman's infant daughter when it was actually the couple's dog who attacked the girl. On Friday the 15th of March, the Kentucky State Police responded to a call in Russell Springs about possible criminal child abuse that had taken place early in the week. Investigators said that the call came from an individual in Greene County, Kentucky who was concerned about the safety of his children. Authorities said that on the 12th of March, a 10-month-old girl was admitted to the Russell County Hospital with injuries suffered from a dog attack. Due to the severity of the wounds, which included multiple skull fractures and brain injuries, the child was transported to the University of Kentucky Hospital via helicopter for more specialised care. The girl's mother and her boyfriend told personnel at the hospital, as well as police, that the child's injuries were sustained after being attacked by an unknown stray dog while the child played in the yard of their mobile home along Bluebird Drive in Russell Springs, Kentucky. Authorities responded to the area where the couple said the child had been attacked and attempted to locate the stray dog, but the efforts were unsuccessful. Police noted that the house smelt like dog feces, the mother had trouble finding a bottle to feed the baby, and that the infant did not have adequate sleeping conditions. As the investigation progressed, investigators determined that the dog that had attacked the child actually belonged to Emily and Joan was not a stray. Authorities said that Joe had concealed the location of the couple's dog after the incident, causing local first responders to use resources searching for a stray dog that did not exist. On Friday the 15th of March, Emily and Joe were arrested. Emily was charged with first-degree criminal abuse of a child under the age of 12, endangering the welfare of a minor, and false report that generates an emergency response. Joe was charged with tampering with physical evidence, and false report that generates an emergency response. They both remain held at the Russell County Detention Centre with bonds set at $10,000 each. A 25-year-old man will spend more than a decade behind bars for beating and stabbing his 73-year-old father to death with a pair of scissors in 2022. On the 18th of March 2024, Jason Tyler Fernandez was sentenced to 12 years for the death of his father, Michael Fernandez, after previously pleading guilty on the 15th of February to one count of voluntary manslaughter. He also admitted to four special allegations and aggravating factors, including that he used scissors as a deadly weapon and that the victim was vulnerable. Authorities said that around 5.45pm on the 9th of March 2022, Jason arrived at his father's residence at the Vintage Crest Seniors Apartments in the 4700 block of Park Lane in Moore Park, California, and the two got into a verbal dispute. The fight turned physical and Jason forced his way inside the unit. Witnesses reported seeing Jason hit his father, 
before leaving the apartment covered in blood. Neighbours went to check on Michael and found him unresponsive with a stab wound from the scissors to his abdomen, as well as significant lacerations to his head and face. Michael was transported to the Los Robles Regional Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead. Ventura County Medical Examiner's Office said Michael died from blunt and sharp force injuries and ruled his death a homicide. About half an hour after the fatal attack, police located an arrest adjacent at a nearby river bottom and he was booked into the Ventura County Prison. Authorities said that Jason has a history of schizophrenia and was battling a psychiatric episode and drug abuse around the time of the incident. Well questioned, Jason told investigators that he believed his father was holding his mother and her dog against their will. He considered his father his best friend and expressed remorse for his actions. He admitted using Xanax and Oxycontin or morphine daily before the incident, but was not taking psychotropic medication. Supervising Senior Deputy District Attorney Rafael Arellana, who prosecuted the case, said, The conviction and sentence in this case demonstrates the defendant's remorse and willingness to accept responsibility for this senseless killing. The victim's death was an avoidable tragedy, and one for which today's sentencing provides some measure of justice, he said. A man is behind bars for killing his ex-girlfriend and wounding a new boyfriend at a workplace shooting. At just before 6.30am on Tuesday the 19th of March, 42-year-old Sean Black went to Triarch Manufacturing at 390 Fountain Street in Blornox, Pennsylvania, and opened fire at the workers. Police responded to the scene on reports of an active shooter. When officers arrived, workers were rushing out of the building telling them that Sean was still firing. Two officers entered the premises and found Sean kneeling over 30-year-old Courtney Smith with two guns lying nearby. He was taken into custody without further incident. Courtney was pronounced dead at the scene with multiple gunshot wounds to her chest. A 26-year-old co-worker, who police identified as Courtney's new partner, was shot multiple times in the torso. He was transported to the Allegheny General Hospital in a critical condition. A supervisor at Triarch told investigators that Courtney and Sean had worked at the manufacturing company for several years. The supervisor also said that the two had been romantically involved, had three children together and had recently broken up. The supervisor said that he was walking out of his office when he saw the former couple wrestling. The supervisor heard Courtney yell, Sean, no, no, at which point he pulled out a handgun and shot her four or five times in the chest. Sean then fired two or three shots at the 26-year-old man. The supervisor said he took cover but then went out to the shooting scene, where Sean pointed his gun at him but didn't pull the trigger. Sean is charged with homicide and attempted homicide, aggravated assault and recklessly endangering another person. He's held at the Allegheny County Jail with bond denied. The investigation into the matter continues. 24-year-old Charles Evans is behind bars for severely assaulting his infant daughter and causing a death last year. Authorities said that at 11.16am on the 26th of June 2023, Charles fatally assaulted his nine-month-old daughter Kinsley Evans at his residence in the Schaefer Apartments Complex in the 12,200 block of Schaefer Highway in Detroit, Michigan. Medics arrived and transported the infant to a local hospital, where she was pronounced dead. The child's grandmother, Asia Nelson, said that on Memorial Day on the 29th of May 2023, her daughter allowed Kinsley to stay at Charles's house for a couple of hours. She said that when she went to pick up her child later that evening, Charles refused to return her. She said they called police and child protective services to try to retrieve the child, but they had no luck, both which allegedly said the baby was safe and there's nothing they could do. Asia said that every time that the police went in there and looked at her, there was nothing wrong with Kinsley. I called Child Protective Services personally myself and tried to get them out there, but they never came out, she said. Asia said that Charles had been physically abusive towards his infant daughter in the past and was not allowed to see her. Asia believes that Charles may have been upset that her daughter no longer wanted to be romantically involved with him. Then more than three weeks later, Asia received a call from police to head to hospital where she learnt that Kinsley had died. She said that her granddaughter showed obvious signs of abuse. She said that Kinsley had bumps on both sides of her forehead, a bruise on her jaw and a swollen chest. An autopsy showed the extent of the abuse on the baby's body. She had a fractured skull, broken ribs, head trauma and a puncture wound to her knee. Upon further investigation on the 16th of March, Detroit police arrested Charles and charged him with felony murder and first degree child abuse. Wayne County prosecutor Kim Worthy said that Kinsley lived a very short life of pain. The alleged facts are unbelievably tragic in this case. 
The injuries inflicted on this nine-month-old baby are too numerous to fathom, she said. On the 17th of March, Charles appeared in court for his arraignment and remains held at the Wayne County Jail without bail. A Child Protective Services supervisor involved in a case has since been fired. Her family says the system failed their little girl and the road to justice is just beginning. A woman was arrested after a gun was found inside a two-year-old son's lunchbox at daycare. The incident occurred at just before midday on Thursday the 14th of March at Jackson's Daycare Centre located at 1232 West 31st Street in West Palm Beach, Florida. 39-year-old Shanae Davis told police that she normally puts the gun in her glove box, but because of recent car break-ins in the area, she's been taking the weapon with her. She said she put the gun in her son's lunchbox because she didn't have a purse and didn't want it out in the open. She then said she forgot about it and dropped her son off at the daycare centre. A teacher found the gun and called police. A daycare also called Shanae and requested her to come to the centre, where police arrested her when she arrived. She was charged with allowing a minor to obtain a firearm and child neglect. Shanae was booked into the Palm Beach County Jail and was released the next day after posting a $2,000 bond. She's scheduled to appear in court again on the 18th of April. A 31-year-old man will spend decades in prison for fatally beating a 24-year-old woman and assaulting a four-year-old daughter in 2022. On Tuesday the 19th of March 2024, 31-year-old Jose Escalante Corchado pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and first-degree assault. A judge sentenced him to more than 30 years on each conviction. The sentences were set to run concurrently. At 5.49pm on the 15th of January 2022, Authorities responded to 7324 Wabash Avenue in Kansas City, Missouri to conduct a welfare check. Responding officers met with the victim's father, Shannon Hopkins, outside the home. When officers entered the residence, they found the victim identified as 24-year-old Mackenzie Hopkins deceased in a bathtub and submerged in water with blunt force trauma injuries to her head and face. Officers also found a four-year-old daughter, Bella, laying on a bed with severe head trauma, and medics rushed the child to a local hospital. Authorities said that a previous 911 call had come from Mackenzie's phone number early that day at just after 6am and dispatchers could hear fighting in the background. During a search of the home, investigators found large amounts of blood and drag marks along the floor. Police also found shoe impressions in the blood. Detectives later spoke with one of the victim's friends at her home on Shawnee Avenue in Kansas City, Kansas. While there, they spotted a pair of cowboy boots near the door. The victim's friend said they belonged to her boyfriend, Jose. The tread of the shoes matched the impressions in the blood at Mackenzie's home. Investigators used surveillance footage to track a truck outside Mackenzie's house. In the surveillance footage on the day of the victim's death, a man matching Jose's description is seen running from Mackenzie's residence. He's then seen getting into a white truck and pulling into a gas station. Jose later admitted that it was him at the gas station. Jose told investigators that he knew the victim and her daughter and was helping him move into the home. The motive in the murder and the attack remains unclear. Shannon said her daughter was caring and the most loving person. Bella, who's doing much better now, lives with her father in Puerto Rico. Forty-one-year-old Stephen Peterson is behind bars for fatally shooting forty-three-year-old Willie Purifoy. At just before 1am on Thursday the 21st of March, Authorities responded to a home at 2702 South Ash Street in Pine Bluff, Arkansas and reports of a man shot. When officers arrived at the scene, they entered the residence and located 43-year-old Willie Purifoy unresponsive with multiple gunshot wounds. He was later pronounced dead at the scene by the Jefferson County Coroner. Upon further investigation, the Pine Bluff Police Department identified Stephen Peterson of Whitehall, Arkansas as a suspect in Willie's murder. At 3.12pm that afternoon, he was arrested and charged with capital murder. He's held at the Jefferson County Jail without bond. Authorities have not disclosed the motive in the killing or the relationship between the suspect and the victim. The investigation into the matter continues. 30-year-old Chelsea Renee Dupron is behind bars for fatally beating her 8-year-old daughter Lila Castle. At 5.19am on Saturday the 16th of March, Authorities responded to a residence at 35224 Phyllis Street in Wayne, Michigan on reports of a child not breathing. When officers arrived, they discovered Lila unresponsive in a bedroom with severe bruising and swelling to her head, neck and face. She was transported to a local hospital, where she was pronounced dead. While Chelsea initially claimed her daughter fell down the stairs, 
She later admitted to following her daughter and hitting her several days before her death. She said that she did not recall the incident, but her daughter told her about it. Chelsea told her boyfriend that her daughter was possessed. The boyfriend said he came home from work and discovered Chelsea's daughter lying all swelled up on the kitchen floor. He picked her up and put her in bed, but claimed he did not take her to hospital because she was not his daughter. He was unsure what to do. Officials said they believe Lila would have survived if she was given medical attention in time. Instead of taking her to the hospital, Chelsea purchased diapers for her because she was bedridden. The boyfriend said Chelsea's daughter was responsive and talking when he carried her to bed. The girl told him she was listening to music when Chelsea attacked her. The girl hid, but her mother tricked out of hiding and assaulted her while pouring water on her. Chelsea also told her boyfriend that a mystery ghost or spirit attacked her daughter in the basement days earlier. Police said Chelsea had issues with alcohol and would drink and drive with her daughter in the car. The Wayne County Medical Examiners determined Lila died from blunt force trauma to the head. Prosecutor Erin Wilmoth said that the pictures reflect a child that does not even look like a child. The massive amount of swelling to her head and face. She was completely unrecognisable, she said. Chelsea is charged with felony murder and first degree child abuse and remains held at the Wayne County Jail without bond. She's due back in court on the 25th of March. A 36-year-old man is behind bars for fatally shooting his 33-year-old friend during a dispute. At 12.50pm on Thursday the 21st of March, authorities responded to a residence at 545 Crystal Lane in Kannapolis, North Carolina after a resident there called 911 to report a family member had been shot. The caller stated that the suspect, who has already left the scene, goes by the name of Batman. When officers arrived, they entered the home and found 33-year-old John Wayne Yancey deceased with a gunshot wound. Witnesses on scene identified the shooter as 36-year-old Cody Dwayne Helms, a resident of Concord. Cody was a friend of the victim, and moments before the shooting an argument occurred between the two. It's unclear what the argument was about. Cody fled the scene after the killing, and was soon captured by a Kannapolis police officer who was assisting with a search one mile from the scene. Cody's charged with murder and is held at the Rowan County Jail. He remains held as he awaits his first court appearance. The investigation into the matter continues. Mother and a teen housemate are behind bars after the woman's child went missing and deputies found multiple malnourished dogs in their home. On Tuesday the 19th of March, Hillsborough County deputies responded to a residence in Sefna, Florida after 31-year-old Tanya Rodriguez reported her son missing from the home. The mother was unable to provide officials with a precise timeline, but indicated that she hadn't seen him. Deputies found the boy at his school the next day. During an interview, the child told officials that he'd been away from home for three days. While conducting a search of the home, investigators found the premises had no electricity or running water, and was in a deplorable state infested with flies and cockroaches, and the floors were contaminated with fecal matter. Four children who lived at the home under Tanya's care were removed and placed into the care of family members. Officials also discovered multiple dogs inside the residence in severely malnourished conditions. On Wednesday the 20th of March, deputies arrested Tanya on four counts of child neglect. Officials also charged the homeowner and Tanya's roommate, 19-year-old Aaron Edwards, on two counts of animal cruelty. Tanya remains held at the Hillsborough County Jail on a $20,000 bond, while Aaron remains held on the $5,000 bond. Hillsborough County Sheriff Chad Cronister said, Child neglect is not just a crime, it's a betrayal of the most important purpose we have as parents, to protect our children. The investigation into the matter continues. A 35-year-old man is behind bars on suspicion of killing a 22-year-old woman and her two children. On the 3rd of March, authorities received a missing persons report for 22-year-old Michaela Johnson and her two children, 4-year-old Miracle Johnson and 7-month-old Messiah Johnson. At around 1.45pm on Friday the 15th of March, investigators served a search warrant at the victim's last known address at an apartment in the 400 block of Orchard Trace Lane in Charlotte, North Carolina, where they found human remains and determined that a crime had occurred. Upon further investigation, police determined that the remains belonged to the missing victims and identified 35-year-old Benjamin Taylor, who was in a relationship with Michaela as a suspect in the murders. On Saturday the 16th of March, detectives located Benjamin in Imperial County, California, and he was arrested. He's charged with three counts of murder and one count of concealment of death. 
He remains held at the Imperial County Jail until he's extradited back to North Carolina. Police have not disclosed the motive in the killings or how the victims died. The investigation into the matter continues. 16-year-old Thomas Roy Stein has been arrested in connection to the fatal shooting of 15-year-old Kayla Rinkin Miller. At around 10pm on Sunday the 17th of March, Kayla and two of her female friends were walking to a McDonald's at 1715 Dale Prada Boulevard South in Cape Coral, Florida to get something to eat after seeing a movie at the Marquee Cinemas, located just over half a mile away, while walking near the intersection of Southeast 20th Street and Southeast 16th Place. A silver Nissan Pathfinder driven by Thomas which was rented by his mother pulled up and blinded them with the vehicle's headlights. Thomas and three other young suspects got out of the vehicle and attempted to rob the three girls when one of the suspects fired a gun, shooting Kayla in the chest. The other two girls were unharmed. The suspects got back into the SUV and fled south down the southeast 16th place. Within minutes of the shooting, police responded to the scene and rendered aid to Kayla. He was still conscious and alert. Medics transported her to a local hospital, where she later died from her injuries. An anonymous witness who lives near the intersection of the shooting said she heard several gunshots. Upon gathering further evidence and reviewing surveillance footage in the area, authorities identified Thomas Stein as one of the suspects. Authorities said that based on our evidence, we believe this was not a random act of violence. At around 4pm on Tuesday the 19th of March, Thomas was with his mother in the SUV as they drove along Bayshore Road in Cape Coral, Florida, when police pulled them over. Thomas was arrested and charged with murder while engaged in robbery. Thomas's mother, Jessica Stein, was shocked as she knew nothing about the robbery and fatal shooting. At 1.09am on Wednesday the 20th of March, Thomas was booked into the Lee County Jail, but was released less than two hours later with no bond set. His arraignment is scheduled for the 8th of April. If convicted, Thomas faces up to life in prison. Authorities said that Thomas is only the first arrest, and that they are searching for the other three suspects in connection to the killing. The investigation into the matter continues.